Hello and welcome to this session from Technologic. I am Akshay and today we will discuss about the short merge join in Spark and this discussion include the join strategy, join hint and the join type for the short merge join and we will also analyze the Spark log for this particular join strategy. And if you talk about the short merge join, so that include two steps. First, we need to short the data set and second, we need to merge the data within the partition and uh, according to the join key, we need to join the same values. So from Spark 2.3, this is the default join strategy Spark is using. And you can over override this preference by using the preferred short merge join property. And if you set it to false, then it will skip that preference. Let's see an example. Let's assume we have two table. One is the employee table, which has the fields like employee number, employee name, and the department ID. And I have created as like 10 records for uh, to generate just like 10 rows in this table. And I have the department table, which has two fields like department number and the department name or description. Like, and I have created like six entries here. And I have intentionally kept one department ID as null, which will not have any match. To show you what is the join type. Let's bring this data to Databricks. I have created a notebook in Databricks and I will upload the file. So upload data and browse the file. So these are the two files and Make sure we'll copy this or you can just copy it here and use it done and then paste it, paste it in the notebook. Now let me rename the data frames. So this is my employee data and this is my department data and if I just show you the data I forgot to attach the cluster in it. Yeah, you see, I have like columns as C0, C1, like this. I don't have the column names because I need to write like header is equal to true and inverse schema from the header. Yeah. To do that, we need to give the options like infer schema is equal to true and header is equal to true. Same will applicable here. Now, if I just process the data frame, it will give you the correct field names as well as the correct data field. Let's see the data now. Yeah, you have the correct data and let's see the department data as well. Yeah, it's also correct. It has the correct field names. Now, let's see the join. So, let's create a data frame as join data and it has two data set do data frame joint like employee data and join it with department data and then I will mention if I just don't mention the key then let's see what happened something it is having the 
all the fields from both the data frames. Now let's see what is the join strategy it may use. So you just need to use the explain here. You see it's a broadcast nested loop join because it's a Cartesian product it is creating. Now let's just change and have the join key mentioned here. So this is department ID and this is joined with department number. And let's see which join strategy it has used. So you see now I have mentioned both the keys and by default it is taking the inner join. And you see so this is by default the join strategy the broadcast has joined. But earlier I have explained that it, it should be short mark join by default as we are using uh, like spark 3 uh, and it is the by default from spark 2.3 why it has happened let's see some of the properties so to get the property we need to write spark.conf.get and we need to mention spark dot SQL dot join dot prefer sort merge join and let's see what is value. Let's give the bracket and run it. So this is the property which you can know that whether that default uh, join strategy is a short mark join or not. So you see this is true still you are getting like the broadcast has joined here whenever you have not mentioned the join strategy. So uh, let's see why it has happened. Let's see one more property and then I will explain it to you why. So this property is called the auto broadcast threshold. So let's write it here spark sql auto broadcast join threshold and let's get its value. So its value is in byte so you can see uh, so this is a very big number let's uh, if you just divide it 1024 twice so you get it's a 10 MB of size. So if any data set which is less than 10 MB then auto broadcast join threshold will be applicable and auto broadcast join will be taken as the join strategy. So it will be automatic choice. Uh, you know that it's very negligible data and I could not see any trace of it. Let's go back to our code and I want to disable this auto broadcast join threshold. How you can do that? So as you get that uh, data, you can set the properties as well. So instead of get, you can write set and set it to a value with minus one. So it will disable the auto broadcast join threshold. Let's see its value now. Yeah. Now let's see what is my join strategy. So you see now it has the short mark join as your join strategy because as the data set is very low you need to disable the auto broadcast join. There is another way so let's set it again back to its default value like 
denim bi. This is in KB and this is in MB, roughly. And it has this value. And uh, let's see what is the joint strategy again. So I believe it will be broadcast as joint again. Yeah. So now if you use the join hint, so hint will be applicable either to the left hand side or to the right hand side table. So I apply it to the left hand side table and the hint value is mark. So this is a very short form. There are three kind of uh, you can use the supple merge or merge join or just simply merge to mention as a hint. And you see again instead of like auto broadcast join threshold is very high as compared to data. You see that still it is taking the short merge join. And let's see how the join happened. Yeah, so this is short merge join and just I will take the data in the data frame and I will show. Just write down, this is the, your job ID, job 19, 20, and 21. Let's go to this. And go to SQL. Yeah, now you see the join data, short march join. And you see the thing, what we have uh explained so first thing is it will filter it if it is not null because the join key cannot be null then again it will exchange the data across the partition like one partition will have only one key and that partition could be in any of the worker node so data will be exchanged between the worker node to have the same key value in the same worker node and then it will short the data according to the join key and then it will actually merge these two data set one is the employee according to the department id and another is the department according to the department number and then it will merge it according to the join key and get you the record joined so this is your inner join so you have not mentioned anything so your join happen according to the inner join so if I just mention the join type, so I just mention left outer and C. And now you can see the data all the data now you miss the data where you have the null as the department so now you have all the 10 records and let's see so now it's 22 23 24 let's go here and this is your short march join now and now you see here in the department table you have this filter not in the employee table because you are not fetching any null record from department table only but you may fetch the null record in the join key from the employee table and then the rest of the steps are almost same thanks for watching this video please stay tuned for the next video